Yesterday, Meta just announced they are going to lay off another 10,000 employees. In this same week, there was a massive bank run in the US due to the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank. Inflation is still at a high and the Federal Reserve in the US shows no signs of slowing down the interest rate hikes. There's a lot of fear and uncertainty currently happening in the world and people are being impacted. There are massive layoffs happening all around the world, not just in the US. And for me, this hits close to home because my own family member was impacted as well. Therefore, in this video, John and I, we will share with you the seven things that you must do to protect yourself during these massive layoffs. Hi everyone, we are John and Fran, a corporate breakout couple. We both have 15 and 17 years of corporate experience respectively, and we broke out our corporate jobs in 2020. We also retired in 2020 at the age of 40 in Singapore. Before we go on to our video, do like and subscribe to our YouTube channel as we will appreciate the love. The number one thing you need to do is to have contingency savings. How many months? Six months. This will give you the financial runway to handle your day-to-day -day expenses so that you have less pressure off to go and find your next job. In the event that you are laid off, the company may provide you a severance package. However, that should not be taken for granted and you should not be depending on that to handle your financial expenses. Take any severance package you receive as a bonus. Therefore, the key to having contingency savings is to allow you to focus on your job search with ease and intention. The second thing you need to do to protect yourself is to evaluate your monthly budget. This is where you really need to know your numbers and be ultra familiar with what you're spending every day and what your expenses look like. Know the difference between your needs and your wants and classify them accordingly. Be aware of your spending, track them, and be prudent on your spend, especially your wants. It would be great if you can find ways and means to reduce your wants to a minimum during this period. If you may not know what's the difference between your wants and your needs, you can refer to our cost of living videos that we have done for the various countries. I'll put the links below. The third thing you must do is to update your resume. I used to work as a headhunter in Singapore. In fact, that was how I met John. He was my candidate, which I placed in my client's organization. Do not wait until you are laid off to update your resume. Your resume must always be updated with your latest accomplishments and your latest projects and your latest role all the time. Do you have a LinkedIn account? If you don't, that's a major no-no. Sign up for one now. Recruiters and headhunters spend a lot of time on LinkedIn looking for candidates. Some profiles on LinkedIn are quite shocking. They don't even have a profile photo and their LinkedIn's are not even updated. How then is someone going to reach out to you for a job opportunity when everything is not updated? It is also always good to reach out to recruitment firms even when you don't need a job so that people know that you are out there and you are interested. Imagine if recruiters and headhunters are very familiar with what you do, your profile and your resume. The moment a job fits matches your profile, you are immediately in the market. The fourth thing you must do to protect yourself during this period is to stay relevant. It is important to keep your set of skills relevant and to upgrade yourself if necessary. Therefore, it is important for you to know what your industry wants and how your set of skills matches in an up-to-date manner. For example, if you are a software engineer and you are still relying on your old programming skills and not up to date with what's popular and what's current these days, for example, blockchain, AI, you might be missing out on the latest opportunities. Or if you are in sales or business development and you do not know what the latest industry trends are and what your client wants, you may be missing out. The fifth thing that you must do is to be open and flexible. You may not be in the best position to be picky on the roles that you want. For example, if a contract role versus a permanent role opens up and the salary scale is about the same, you might want to consider that. There's also no shame in taking a pay cut, especially when you move to a different industry. I know a lot of people who have taken a pay cut when they move jobs or move roles into different industries, but currently they're doing very well. The sixth thing that you must do is to build your network and your connections. Honestly, there are opportunities everywhere. However, some of the opportunities may not be made available to you if you do not know the right people 
at the right time. If you do not put yourself out there, how will then people who have influence know about you and recommend you opportunities? The seventh thing that you must do is to manage your emotions. There are actually a lot of emotions that goes through someone either when you are hearing that your friend got laid off or when you yourself are laid off. It can be very shocking, disappointing and disheartening to be laid off, especially if you've given your time and energy and loyalty to the company. And on top of that, you have to worry about your finances. So there's a lot of emotions in a short span of time that you have to deal with. What are emotions? Emotions are actually energy in motion. Therefore, all these emotions have got to go somewhere. So what can you do? Now, it's perfectly okay for you to cry, let out your emotions, scream, yell, because you're only human and these emotions have got to go out. You can also talk to somebody that you trust, talk to your friends, you know, so that you have a support group. You can also go outside to nature to go for walks, clear your mind and meditate and ground and center yourself. Most people do not know how to handle their emotions and therefore they take the easy way out, which is run away, go for a holiday, take your severance package and bonus, go for a holiday and just run away. I know it's very tempting, but please don't go there. You'll just go down a downward spiral. We hope that this video has been helpful to you. If you know of someone or people in your life that could really benefit from this video, please share this video to them. If you like our content, please subscribe to our channel and like this video. John and I, we really just want to help the community in our little way that we can.